Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to extend the b uh, battery life on a uh, small device. This is just a little uh, JVC video camera that I use. And uh, well, it comes with a very limited battery. Uh, the battery is only 700 milliwatts and it's a good, good for about 15-20 minutes of, uh, see if I can get that in focus there, 15 or 20 minutes of uh, run time. But uh, it's just a 700 milli milliamp hour uh, battery so it's kind of limited in, in the sense that if I want to take a video of anything longer than 20 minutes uh, I'm gonna have a problem basically it's gonna run out of juice and I'm gonna have to have it plugged into uh, an external power supply like this like the one it came with well that's not always handy or useful um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, today show you how I built an external battery pack for this system um, and Actually, this would apply to any device that you want to that runs on 5.2 volts like this one uh, on the external jack. Okay, so what we have here, as you see, it's got a little external power jack, and the power supply plugs into that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is build a a battery pack that plugs into the external power jack, and that'll keep it uh, running at least uh, an hour or two longer. Uh, probably around two hours longer when you see what I'm going to do. So, uh, number one, if you, uh, this is going to require you to understand how to do a continuity check, and I'll show you how to do that with a meter. And also, you're going to have to understand uh, how to solder something, as well as how to uh, make sure that the specs on your um, power supply match the specs on the ex external battery pack. Okay, here's all the things we're going to use. I'm going to use to uh, create this uh, um, external power pack for my uh, video camera. I'm going to use a, a battery holder, a three, sorry, a four double A battery holder, and I'll put the link somewhere to get that from Amazon. Um, I'm going to use soldering iron, four batteries, of course, um, a identical cable to the original power source cable. Uh, a meter, and uh, all I, all you need the meter for is continuity testing. So if you have just a continuity tester, and you know what that is, then just use that. A um, little bit of solder for soldering the wires together, and um, some heat shrink tubing. Now, if you don't have the heat shrink tubing, you can always just use uh, electrical tape. But I don't find that as a very per permanent insulation. Um, medium I'd much rather use uh, heat shrink tubing around my uh, electrical contacts because I know that they'll basically be protected forever uh, so these are all the things you're gonna need okay here's my external battery pack I'm oh, sorry my external power supply for that JVC ha handy cam and I don't know if you can tell or not but uh, or whether you're gonna be able to read this on the video let me see get it in focus for you and it is 5.2 volts um, output at one amp okay which is pretty standard um, also another key thing is down here it shows you the polarity of the plug so the outside of the plug uh, is negative polarity and the inside of the plug is positive polarity so all this is important to make sure that this is going to work for you okay so we'll go from there all right these are the batteries I'm going to use uh, they're double a 1.2 volt uh, 2200 milliamp hour each uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeables and I'm going to use four of them which will add up to uh, what 4.6 volts which is more than enough to power the uh, camera even though it's 5.2 it's close enough oops sorry I'll get back into focus there for you so those are what I'm going to use you can use whatever you like and a standard double A is 1.5 volts so four of them would give you uh, six volts uh, in total so you're within a, a range there that it will work and then I'm going to use a little battery pack like this which is a double-a battery pack and uh, as you can see it's a four uh, battery pack and that's what I'm going to put the batteries into uh, maybe I'll use some velcro or something to attach it to the camera or uh, to my tripod and uh, obviously well we're going to have to solder those ends onto my um, uh, adapt my sorry my uh, plug here that I actually got from I got this plug from a, a, a AC uh, sorry a, a car adapter 
Um, not particularly for this camera, but it's the right size plug. I'll show you the, this, the two plugs together here so I get it in focus. As you can see, they're identical in size, sorry. And the in internal hole is the same as well. So, I'm going to use this wire hooked up to this battery pack uh, to power my camera. And I'm going to solder them both together, but first I'm going to check the polarity on the plug to make sure it's right. Okay, this is the power lead I'm going to use to connect to my battery pack. And I got this power lead off a uh, car adapter that has uh, uh, had exactly the same exterior plug. Uh, the color is a little different on the end, but the, the uh, physical properties of the two plugs are exactly the same uh, inside and outside. So that's what you're going to need uh, to hook up to your battery pack. It's quite long, which is a great thing. But in checking my power uh, pack itself, uh, JVC Power Pack, it actually says on it that the uh, inside needs to be positive and the outside needs to be negative. Okay, so which is a great thing to know. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, little continuity tester, put it on continuity, then I'm going to test it. And of course it's not working right now. Let's try that again. Okay. Don't know if you can hear that or not, but it beeps when you get continuity. And I'm going to check to see that the outside is negative and the inside is positive. And the way I do that is just by putting a one lead to that end and the other lead to the white end. Now, normally white is white or black is negative and red is positive. And since I know that the negative lead uh, is uh, I'm going to be putting the negative lead on the outside. Uh, white is negative, and of course, red is going to be positive. Uh, you know, I'm checking to see if there's a short, but there isn't any short, uh, or else it would be beeping right now. But when I put it on this side, I get continuity there. Let's see if I can stick it inside. I don't want to wreck the plug. It's quite tiny in the center. No, it's too small for me to get a, a lead on the inside. But I know that white is negative and it goes to the outside, so the red's positive and it goes to the inside. That's what I'm going to uh, go with on that. Alright, next thing I'm going to do uh, is... Alright, next thing I'm going to do is strip off a little bit of uh, insulation from the edge of this wire uh, just to make it a little longer and give me more surface area to adhere to this wire. Uh, then I'm going to tin it, which means I'm going to put some solder on it and melt it into the wire itself and I'll show you that. Okay, so first I'm going to tin these two little wires and actually the other two are uh, already partially tinned or tinned already but it's the same procedure. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a hot soldering iron, which is what I got right there, and I put the wire on top of the hot soldering iron and I'm using the uh, uh, a flat edge um, uh, end on that and basically you heat the wire up and then you just put some there you go, you put some uh, solder on it like that okay and what that does is it impregnates the wire with uh, solder which makes it connect much easier when you're soldering it together again just like that okay so that's step one, I just tin the, tin the uh, uh, wires, you do that on both sides um, my sides are done now so next thing we need to do is you have to prepare to put some uh, what I'm going to use is heat shrink tubing on these and the reason for the heat, heat shrink tubing is, is to insulate the wire so it doesn't uh, cross or short or do anything like that on you so I'm going to use some black and I'm going to use a broad piece of black around all the wire like that I want, basically I want it all insulated. So I'm just going to take it and, and put about, let's see, about that much in the, on it. And as you can see, it sticks off the back there. So that's what I'm going to put on it to uh, insulate it. And then I'm going to put it over here, which gives me this little wiggle room in the back down here. Um, and as well, uh, I'm going to use uh, heat shrink tubing on each terminal on this wire. Sorry this one and this one. Um, you don't really need to use it on both but 
it's up to you. I prefer to use it on both. And uh, so I'm just going to put a little bit on uh, one of them, or both of them, and uh, shrink that down. So I'll uh, cut a little piece of this white stuff out. Okay, there's my two little pieces of heat shrink tubing. Like I said, you could just use one because one will insulate the one wire and the other can't short at that point. But I like using two. And I also put that big piece of uh, uh, that bigger piece of uh, heat shrink tubing up here on the long wire instead of the short wire. And then I'll extend that down over top of this when I'm done. So the next thing we need to do is solder these up. And as you can see, red to red goes to red, and the black and the white are negative, so they both go together as well. So let's solder those up. And you can just do a little wrap around on them if you wish. Like that. Yeah, that wouldn't work too well for me. But let's try that again. Yeah. Okay, and then I just put some heat to it and then put the solder on top and keep the heat shrink tubing back from the wire as far back as possible because it is heat shrink tubing and wait for that to cool down there we go one Do number two here. So it doesn't have to be really a solid connection. It just needs to hold together so long enough to put the solder on it. All right, I got those two um, wrapped around each other. I'm just going to put some solder on top and let it melt through. Put my soldering iron underneath it. That's it. Just let it cool down. So now we have the connection there. Um, next, you'll want to get the heat shrink tubing on there to uh, insulate it. So just put it, put it over top like that. And uh, I'm going to use a lighter. You could actually use the heat off the soldering gun to, to uh, cool that down, but I just I'm sorry to heat that up, but I like to uh, just use a lighter on it real quick. One side. As you can see, it shrinks quickly. And there's on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Make sure you get it in the center. That's it. Like magic. Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll wait for that to cool down, which is about now. And then I'm just going to pull down that black piece of heat shrink tubing I put on the actual wire itself here. And probably you can't see it with this contrast, but uh, there it is, as you can see. And sneak those two inside. And unfortunately, that's not working for me. <laughs> the heat shrink tubing I used was too skinny uh, for those two little connectors. So I'm going to have to take that apart again and do it again. Okay, I was actually get, able to get that piece of uh, heat shrink tubing around the actual connectors. So now I'm just going to heat it up, shrink it down. Like so. And at this point, we're basically ready to test this out. Uh, I have the end of the, the end connector and the uh, box all done. So I'll just put my batteries into it. Uh, thing to remember is spring side goes to the negative part of the uh, battery. Basically the rule on most sets, but make sure you follow it. Um, there we go. And there we go. There we go. 
that's all four batteries so now I should have power onto this connector and I'm going to test that with my camera here here we go and note that I took the battery out There we go, it's actually functioning. Uh, it's telling me to check my lens cover, there it is. And it's working just fine. Um, one thing you need to know, uh, if you're gonna use this battery charger, this battery solution with this charge, with, with your actual original battery, the problem's gonna be one, one it's, gonna be, it's gonna try and charge this battery. And that's fine, because you got lots of juice on this. So the plus side is that you'll have two batteries running on your camera at one time. So if this one runs out, it'll automatically switch over to this one. Uh, the minus side is that the onboard battery will suck more juice out of this battery than the camera would by itself. So it's kind of a, you know, double-edged sword. Uh, if you want a little bit of redundancy in case, you know, just in case so you don't run out of uh, battery unexpectedly with this you have this as a backup if it's inside your camera and I'll show you that okay there we go and the charge and power light is on right now so it's actually uh, it's actually charging at this moment Let's see if you can see that there it is um, but you know uh, it's up to you how you run it basically I now have probably two to three hours of running time with this battery pack and it's way cheaper than buying a high capacity battery pack for, your, for this camera. It would be like $70 for the ba battery pack. Uh, this little battery holder is like $3, $4. And the batteries themselves are probably another $6, $7 in those batteries. Um, the cable, well, you're going to have to go hunting around for one that has the proper end. And then you have to make sure that the polarity on that cable is correct. Because if you get it wrong... I'm not responsible for damages you cause on your electronic equipment. Basically, electronic equipment does not like to be hooked up backwards. So, you know, make sure that your positive is to where it's supposed to be and your negative is where it's, to, where it's supposed to be. And uh, you can use a meter to find that out. All right. So that's my solution on how to um, connect an external battery pack. Now, another little tidbit you could do is like, you know, I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of Velcro. Uh, tape on this which will allow me to tape it to either to the side of the camera if I wish uh, or uh, to the actual tripod itself which is where it's probably going to go more than likely because if you're using it for extended periods of time uh, more than likely you'll have a tripod on it but uh, uh, it's not the only solution that you could use you could put it in your pocket if you wanted to you know it's up to you what how you mount it onto your camera or how you do that thank you very much for watching and I hope this helped you out